Hi everybody, Mr. Dorothy here. We are here for another art live for kids and adults too. Um, give everybody a second to pop on um, and then we're going to get started for today. Um, today's drawing is going to be um, based on the very well-known artist. You might have heard of him before, um, Vincent Van Gogh. Um, and we're going to be creating probably one of the most um, well-known pieces of art um, in the history of art, um, probably second only to the Mona Lisa. Um, but we're going to be doing our own Starry Night. Um, so as people pop on, um, things you need today, um, pencil and eraser, um, piece of paper. Um, I, if you have colored paper, like I have kind of a, a manila kind of color paper, um, just because I'm running low on, on white paper, um, but it kind of fits with what we're going to be going through here. Um, and then for colors today, if you have access to um, different yellows, different blues, um, get them. So I have all different colors of blue, um, yellows, um, those are the two main colors, and a black and gray, um, but those are the main colors we're going to be using for today. Um, just a little bit of history about Vincent Van Gogh. Um, a lot of the artists that I've been talking and teaching about so far um, have been artists that maybe um, aren't as popular or they kind of are going against the naysayers, the people saying that they're not good enough or they're not real artists. Um, and Vincent Van Gogh was totally that. Um, when he was alive, he um, was extremely unpopular. Um, he used to get mocked a lot by a lot of the uh, art community, um, and uh, he only sold one painting while he was alive, um, and it was to his brother, um, who bought it so that he could basically buy, Vincent Van Gogh could actually buy it for food and, and pay bills. Um, and then now he is one of the most, um, well-known artists in the world. Um, and Starry Night particularly is a really cool piece. It was one of his last paintings. Um, it was painted in 1889. Um, and it was actually the view outside of his insane asylum. Because um, he was going a little cuckoo. Um, and so he painted <coughs> a whole bunch of different um, scenes from that view. Um, but this became one of the most famous. Um, and other little known facts too, like the big kind of spire. We're going to use this as a... So that big spire everyone thinks is a building is actually a tree. Um, it's actually a cypress tree. Um, and there's lots of symbolism, which means that things are, are representing other... Um, ideas or concepts and so that tree holds a lot of uh, symbolism too so um, I posted a video for some um, Vincent Van Gogh um, resources there's tons and tons of resources about Vincent Van Gogh so feel free to pop on to the Museum of Modern Art um, his museum is in uh, the Netherlands, um, but yeah, so let's get started. So I have my piece of paper, um, and I'm going to start with my pencil, just starting very lightly. Um, I'm just going to start about a third of the way down and kind of make drawing very lightly. I'm going to draw darker so that you all can see. You don't want to draw this dark. But that's going to be our ground below. This is our, it's called a horizon line, where the ground meets the sky. 
So we have our horizon line down first. And then I'm gonna start just adding the swirls in the sky. Um, Vincent Van Gogh's artwork has a lot of movement and lines, lines looking like they're moving. So I'm gonna create the stars to start off. In the corner, I sort of have the moon. And again, I'm doing it very dark. You don't wanna do it this dark, but in the right corner, we can put our moon. And the cool thing about his artwork or what your artwork can have is that these stars, there's no real right or wrong way to put them. But you wanna make sure that it's starry and then you have a few of them. And they kind of have circles inside of circles because it's like a glowing of a light of a star. And then all we need to do is just make some swirls. And these swirls Just kind of so you end up with something like this. Just some really big swirls. <clears throat> and then in the area that I have that I left, in this area is where we're gonna put our cypress tree. And again, the general shape of this is kind of it's kind of like a ear of corn with some little things on it. So there's, and at the top, it kind of gets a little more pointed. So feel free to just sketch something out and then like I just did I went back and erased parts but that's what we want to do for our um, cypress tree and we need to edit some out I'm drawing lightly and I, I started with the basic shape and then went back and edited stuff out and there I have my cypress tree and my starry night And we'll add some stuff into the bottom. It's just there's some buildings and things in, in his. Um, but we're gonna start with our um, sky. Um, I have a bunch of different kinds of yellows. Um, so I'm just gonna start uh, when you're doing your stars <coughs> or your moon, um, the circle in the center you want to be the lightest of your yellows. And then as you move out, the star gets, it's, think of it like a bright light. Like as you're closer to the light, it is lightest. And then as you move out, it gets lighter. So I'm gonna start in my center. And I'm just going to start to color in. And I did not erase um, my pencil lines for this because if the colors get a little bit muddy or smudgy for this piece, um, that's okay. Um, 
Vincent van Gogh is known for a type of painting called impasto. Uh, impasto is just this like showing the color, showing the brush stroke. Um, we're obviously doing a drawing, but um, so if if your colors get a little bit smudgy or streaky, that's okay. Um, I just did here. So you can see the pencil ink is kind of mixing with it. So that's okay. And I'm just gonna keep going around. And I'm gonna get all of my areas. Again, with the moon or the stars, you're starting with your lightest color in the center of the star. And then as you move out, then you get darker. using some of the pencil lead to kind of swing it around a little bit on purpose so you can see how the lead of the pencil is kind of smudging and blending in with your um, marker that is a intentional thing usually we leave those out because we don't want things to look smudgy or but again it kind of goes with the look of Vincent Van Gogh's artwork. And this one kind of came out really cool. So you can see the different... Yes! Yes, Stacy. Smudging, smudge, smudge, smudge. So I'm just using one color. I'm actually going to come back on top and go back with my darker color. And not only can you just color in, but you can take your marker and make some dashed lines in those lighter areas too. It will kind of replicate the look of Vincent Van Gogh's, you were saying, the movement of his lines. So I'm just using some dotted lines, some dashed lines, to create the look of the kind of glow of a star. Then, our next step, we're going to add some blues into the background. And just like with the star, we're going to start with our lightest color first. Um, I'm actually going to leave some of the paper, because I have like a yellowish tint of a paper. And we're going to put some yellow, but we're going to do the same kind of concept with the dotted lines. And I, I want to follow... Some of my swirls. So I'm just going to start with a lightish color. And just start to make those swirls. And then the rest of this is just going to be filling in with dotted lines, dashed lines, or sometimes they're called broken lines, um, but just using different blues, different um, 
light blues, dark blues, some grays if you want to. But you want to keep mimicking the swirl pattern that you have created. So you can see how I start to just add those swirl patterns with those dotted lines. The so dotted lines are basically just dashes. I'm gonna get some different blues, some lighter blues, because these are all kind of dark. This one's more of like a aqua blue, and that's okay too. But again, following the pattern of the squirrel. And our end goal is to completely fill if you have stars you can go around the outside of them and use the star as a circular pattern to go around. So just slowly building up and adding those colors into the background. And if you overlap colors, that's perfectly fine. That's actually uh, better because then you won't have too much of your paper showing. So our goal is eventually to fill up our entire paper. So if you overlap some, that's totally fine. <laughs> so I'm just outlining, not outlining, but doing my dash to climb around the outside of my stars. And I'm going to get another kind of blue. Violet blue. And I'm going to get some darker outlines around. And if I want to make a spiral, I can do that too to kind of just make sure the biggest thing for your background is just making sure you're using those dashed dotted line. from your other areas so that we don't have and I'm gonna get as close as I can to my tree if I go over it a little bit that's okay too because we're gonna be using black and dark gray for it so it'll cover up but if I want to get close like I obviously just covered up part of my tree but I'm going to be using a darker color on top so it will cover it up so we don't have to worry about that. So I'm at a pretty decent point in my background. I'm going to kind of come in and just for extra punch, I'm going to outline my 
moon from my stars in the dark blue. I'll add an occasional dotted line inside of those in blue. Just so they really stand out in the blue background. And then I'm going to find one last blue and I'm going to go into the sky just a little bit more and kind of hit any areas that maybe have a little bit too much of the paper showing. But again, I'm still using that broken, dotted, dashed, whatever you want call it, line, just move, just put that in marker, move, put that in marker, move, put that in marker. Just building up your color. There's not really, you can't have too many blues in this stuff. So I think our, hi Peter, thank you. Um, so here we have our background for our starry night. Okay, so here we have background and now it's time to do our um, village, if you will. Um, this, you can put, uh, there's a church. Again, you can just put houses. I'm gonna put my little church. Um, we've got the roof, and then the steeple, and a little side piece of the house. Let's see what else there is. There's a couple houses, but the, the other thing is there's also other little hills. So you can do that put those in. I'm just going to leave the one church there. Um, and for the background um, of the ground, there's like browns, um, dark, dark browns. And the area in the back is going to be darker. So I again am going to just put bunch of dotted dash lines. And again, if I go over any of my trees, that's okay. We're going to be covering it up. That's why we're saving that for last. If anybody watching is a fan of Doctor Who, I have seen clips from it, but there's, I know there's a um, Vincent Van Gogh episode. lighter color and the darker color. We're going to add more colors to both, but you can see how this one looks like it's closer. 
the darker color makes it look like it's going back, it's behind. And I'm just going to keep adding. So I'm going to find another dark brown. And just keep filling in. With dark dashes. <clears throat> Did it chunk up? Ooh, that's nice. If you have the availability to add different types of colors, it'll just add more depth and dimension to, I'm going to outline my church one, my house. Church got a little cross on top. Hello Jennersons. So there's my background of my uh, ground now, my you know, middle ground. And then I'm going to go just a little bit more browns in the front area. And again, just making those dashed dotted lines just to fill in any of I can take my dark, 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 and I might just make sure that line between the sky and the ground is clearly defined. I might even come through and just make the line between the two grounds more defined. background, my sky, I have my ground, and you can put whatever buildings you want in that, um, in the picture, it's really hard to see in his painting, but there's like a small little village, um, so you can put as many houses as you want, and yeah, um, our last um, little tidbit is going to be our cypress tree. Now, if you have access to um, different grays, or maybe even a white and a black, or um, a just a black, you can not press as hard, um, and you can get some lighter colors. But I, I have, you know, a couple of grays and a black so I'm going to um, start with the lightest color first and I'm just going to color the whole thing I was saying earlier that if you have some areas that you covered with some of your background colors that's okay obviously the gray won't cover it but when we get to the black the black will for sure color it, cover it. And I'm just doing quick. Doesn't need to be too solid because I'm actually going quick and messy to give it that kind of texture that we're looking for. And then I was going to add more layers. And now I'm going to make sure that I'm adding my dashed dotted
my dash to my dotted line. I'm using like a little, a quick little flick. You can do that too. But I'm moving my hand around so that I can not have them all in the same direction or in the same place. And then I'm going to just keep going darker. I'm using a darker gray. If you're using a single color like a black, you could just layer black layers on top of each other or just leave some white paper beneath it. So you can see in mine, I can still see parts of my vanilla paper through that. That will give it the illusion of being lighter too. So again, I'm just moving my hand around, giving little flicks. And then I'll go with my last um, color. And I'm going to use my black. I'm just going to outline. Outline it, and then I'm going to just go in and add some last flicks of my marker with some dashed lines, and then I have my tree finished. So, what are we doing, Jenner Sands? <laughs> We're working on a Vincent Van Gogh piece, and we just finished. Um, I'll post, um, so here we have our Van Gogh. Um, you can, I'll be ending this live in a, in a couple minutes, so you can feel free to go back and watch from the beginning. I think once it's done being live, then it can, you can go back and watch. Um, or you can go to my YouTube channel, at Jason Dorfee on YouTube, um, and you can find, I'll get that video up. Um, it takes a little bit of time to process and kind of upload, but we can, I'll get that up as soon as possible. Um, but uh, I hope you enjoyed making your own Starry Night um, by Vincent Van Gogh. Um, again, one of the, probably the most famous pieces of art, and most recognizable um, pieces of art in the history of civilization. Um, I think everybody kind of can know this painting and at least know something about it. Um, but I hope that you can check out other videos. Um, like in the previous post about this live, I put a video, a PBS, I think it's a PBS video um, that I've used um, to talk about Vincent Van Gogh and Starry Night. A um, couple other good things. There's a um, Loving Vincent is a... Uh, movie where people actually it's, it's all paintings it's stop motion paintings um all about vincent van gogh um there's tons of great resources about vincent van gogh out there um take a peek um but i hope you enjoyed your starry night painting or drawing um please pop them in the comments um i'm gonna do a big post of a bunch of past art projects in the past couple of of lives because um, not everybody's posting them so I want to see them um, so please do that uh, go follow me on YouTube at Jason Dorfee go follow my classroom Instagram page at Mr. Dorfee's Art Room ES3 or my personal is at Jason Dorfee um, you can find information about future lives and I think that is it so thank you all for watching. Hope everyone has a wonderful Wednesday, and I will see you all again on Friday. All right, bye, everybody. Love you.